Welcome everyone. In this next video, I'm going to demo an RGB LED light strip from Tekken. They were gracious enough to send me in a, a waterproof uh, LED light strip to review and uh, I'm going to go through that in this next video. And I incorrectly called the remote, I'm going to try to edit in the video, but I incorrectly called it an RF remote. It's not, it's infrared. For some reason I, I was in my head, in my head RF, I don't know why. But anyway, uh, in the beginning we had a lot of frustrations with the remote and we have just struggled to get it to change colors or change modes or anything. And I think, oddly enough, I think it just had to do with the break-in of the remote itself. Sometimes these little pads that you press on or the contacts behind the little buttons are a little bit glitchy. But it's working now. And it's working far better than it was in the actual video. This is the next day. So not real sure what happened there. Uh, just the break-in of the remote, I guess. I don't know what else it could be. But anyway, hope you liked the video. Welcome everyone. Uh, Tekken recently contacted me about reviewing their SL01 RGB light strip. Uh, it has a controller and you can change the speed, flash, change the color of it. And there's some things that I want to show you about it. And in the background, I just have it draped around my TV. As you can see here, it's kind of in the floor. And I'm going to stick to the back of my TV uh, here in a little while. Uh, if you don't have, if you haven't had much experience with these LED light strips. This is 16 feet, 16 point something, five meters. And uh, there's plenty to do, it's cuttable. You can cut them every so often. We're gonna talk about that and I'll show you how to connect it if you do cut it or what it'll look like behind my TV just uh, kind of as a backlight. So please stay tuned. All right, my little intro, I talked about how you could cut these and you can, you can cut them. There's a little picture of scissors right here between the copper pads and uh, every three RGB LEDs. And it's fine, it comes with these little connectors. And what you do, you cut them and you stick them in the ends and you put the little pieces on top of it. And to create a 90 degree, you just twist it. For me, I don't use those, I'm a solder guy. I have all wire all over the place and I would just tin these copper pads up. You would just have to scrape the silicone off of it because these are waterproof. Scrape the silicone off, uh, tin these copper pads up and wire in individual wires. But anyway, what we're gonna do now, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to show you, uh, first let's pick a color, let's go to red. So the little like the left node of these LEDs, you can kind of see in film right here on the left side is lit up. Let's check out, let's check out blue. Now if we want to mix, let's just go to purple. And how they create these colors, it's a mixture of, of various colors. And it's washing out my lens to a little bit different, kind of an ultraviolet color, but it's not really super purple. What about teal? Can we do teal? All right, I want to show you white and how they create white with an RGB strip. This is white and it looks white in film. With the naked eye, what is actually happening, you're seeing a combination of red, blue, green. And it is not true white. With the naked eye, it kind of, it, it, it kind of looks like cool white, maybe. On, on this film, it doesn't. It actually looks pretty bright white. But uh, there, is, there are no white LEDs on this RGB strip. It's, it's, it's just, you have your 12 volt positive. If I can get this to focus, you have blue. There we go. Blue, red, and green. So that's what creates the white. Yeah, I mean, it works pretty well. Let me see here. Let's turn this down. I'm holding the down button. It's taking forever. Clicking down, it's about the, and the light output dropped about every second by holding it down. So you're looking at what, 10 seconds for brightness? Okay, it's not even working now. What is it, what's happening? All right, I had to click, I had to click the up to make it go up off on and these controls weren't even working we had to kind of like really work the controls to get them to make contact white light let's go to fade is that fade no let's flash stroke let's go strobe all right let's see if we can change the speed let's turn the speed up does that even happen is that is that a thing okay yeah it is and that's pretty cool all right so i'm going to show you a splice and for this, you cut right in the center of the copper pads. I know that looks a little bit uh, a little bit trippy the first time you do it. It has to go in on this one, so it'll be like this, right? So just keep it straight. 
I don't know about this piercing thing. We're gonna try it again, but I, I have little faith that we're gonna make it all the way through. Let's try it though, why not? My hands are probably in the way for most of this work, but. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. No. Okay. All right, so I, I pierced it probably in the wrong spot. But let's, uh, let's plug this in and see if anything happens. Okay, so this is kind of what I thought. When we put all this together, I thought I'd, I'd made a mistake. Uh, both clamps clamp down hard i'm set up for my 90 degrees and i was like what's going on i got i got power here obviously because that's this goes straight into the wall and i was mashing around on this when i was mashing around on this and watch this if i squeeze this the light comes on so it, it, you know these clamps are fine and there's no other there's no other way to do it if you put it in there straight and you and you get it where it's supposed to go you can still screw up. So uh, I always recommend anytime that you're trying to do anything with these lights and you cut them, scrape the silicone off and then solder your wires together. These are gonna only be as good as, as they are, which as you can see, not great. For whatever reason, I had to remove this connector and install this connector. I did have to go ahead and, and, and pop this off with my Victorinox and cut the silicone off of this sheathing. Now, I did go over the instructions and it doesn't make mention of removing the silicone first, but I had huge issues with not removing it first. It was harder to put the clamp on. And so let's go ahead and install this part I need, or actually mock fit this part up. And I gotta make one more cut and I'm gonna try to use this connector because you only get two with the kit for whatever reason, and then uh, try to try to get this TV backlit. So we're gonna go through it. Uh, I don't know what color we got going on here. My TV's backlit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some some troubles that I had. Let's go to red. Let's, let's, can we make this red? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, it, it looks great. Uh, it only comes with two connectors for 90 degrees, or or, or just extensions. But I, I can I can solder in. Uh, the bottom leg of this color, as you can see, it's just kind of just kind of going up and around on the edges, right? So let's uh, let's let's flash. Let's get crazy with it. Let's do something cool. What do we got? You got anything? It's not working. Oh, okay. Here we got something now. Let's try. It. Okay, there's a. Okay, here's some kind of fade coming in. <laughs> It's a little bit of a struggle, but you know, we've, we've had fun uh, just kind of throwing this video together. It's kind of on a whim, which is kind of how I do things. Can, uh, let's, let's make it crazy. Can you can do the, do the flash and then turn and do the up arrow until it goes as fast as it'll go. Can we do that? <laughs> okay, here we go. Thanks Tekken and thanks for watching. All right, and that's uh, that's pretty much a wrap for the video. Uh, just kind of ended up with like a like a slow fade around the TV, and my wife thinks that I need to put the uh, the the line under it and put some LEDs on the bottom. But the way the TV is shaped doesn't really allow for that. It would be kind of weird, and I'd have to put it up a little bit a little bit higher up. So I don't think I'm going to do it. Maybe maybe not. Probably not. But it would be easy to do. And uh, in closing, I talked about some things I wanted to discuss with you about the difficulties I had. I can't touch these connectors. Uh, every time I touch the connectors in the corners, uh, I'll lose lights or the lights will not be the same because of uh, uh, in in inconsistent connections with the, with the clip. So all that has to be taken down and it has to be hard soldered in. And that's just the way you should do it. You sh if you expect your stuff to be durable and you wanna be able to twist on it and make these turns, make these bends, you can't use the clamps. I mean, uh, it's been my experience, and that's not just with taking RGB light strips. I've probably had 20 or 30 of these light strips that I've used over the course of years. You, know, you can look back and, and see my video I've made of that huge uh, island light that I made. It was a, it was a big my light, uh, big setup. And there was a lot of work done and probably over 150 solder joints. So, but anyway, that's the way to do it. Uh, the clamps are fine uh, when they work. Uh, like I said, in this situation, if I don't touch it, it'll work. 
but don't expect it to be durable and don't expect to be able to twist on them or pry them and then work. That's just, uh, that's just my experience and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks again.